<clears throat> hey everybody, Jeff here. It's been a while since I made a video. I've been so busy recently, so I thought I needed to catch up. So I'm hoping that uh, I'm going to do a couple videos, hopefully consecutive tonight, because there's a contest I'd like to get involved in, some threads, things like that. We'll see how it goes. I have one or two or three planned at least. So um, first off, I wanted to hit the uh, one that Robert Z put out there for the uh, Mount Rushmore, the Mount Rockmore. Uh, four favorite singers that we would like to see put on a sculpture of Mount Rushmore that somebody made for us personally. <clears throat> now, gave some thought to this. I mean, there are a ton of singers that I like, that I uh, appreciate their work in various genres of music. Um, so, I mean, it's just like, wow, where do I begin? I have such a wide taste of music. Where do I go? What do I do? So I decided, okay, look, I grew up in the early 80s, you know, late 70s, early 80s. I'm a rock boy. I am a metal head. I'm a hair metal head. I'm a, that's just kind of what I grew up listening to. And as I got older, my tastes, you know, gr gradually grew to, you know, contain a lot of other styles. But I'm going to stick with the roots. I'm going to go with what is longest, uh, the longest styles of music in my life. And uh, so I'm going to stick I'm going to represent the you know the rock and metal categories here with mine. Um, so these are my favorite rock and metal singers. Now, in the early 80s, there were a couple singers that just, it seemed like everybody was compared to them. It was like they were the high watermark. And that was, it was in my mind at least, and in, and in a lot of people that I know, and it seemed like everybody was saying, oh, any bands that sound like this band or like this singer, and that was always the the high watermark, you know, the, the, find somebody that sounds like that. Um, and so there's certain names that were always cast around for that, and one of them was Jeff Tate of Queensryche. Now, I love Queensryche, loved them from day one when I got their first EP. Um, loved them all throughout the 80s and 90s. Um, I know nowadays the name Jeff Tate brings up sourpuss on a lot of people's faces. There's been a lot of turmoil, a lot of uh, a lot of things have happened that caused them to get kicked out of Queensryche. A lot of you know, just a lot of negative press going around. But but I don't care where the man is now. I have to say, I went and saw Jeff Tate in concert two years ago, actually. It was April 7th. It might have been last year or year before. I got a, they, they gave us a copy of the set list uh, for the show he played. But anyway, it was a, um, and I ran across this the other day. It was a one of those acoustic type. Well, it was sort of, yeah, mainly acoustic. But, it, you know, he had a guy playing some acoustic drums and stuff too. But it was, so it was kind of, and it was in a little club, um, very personal. I mean, I was right up front. He's like right there. So the first time I got to see him, I haven't seen Queensryche live. Never got to see them live. Um, the only vinyl that I have to show Queensryche Live is actually one of the more controversial things because after he was kicked out of Queensryche, he put out an album under the name Queensryche. Totally different band, but he is doing the singing. Um, he doesn't do this anymore. Now he's, you know, he's he does solo work. But as you can tell, there's, you know, obviously manimosity here. Uh, F you, you know, even though it's frequency unknown. Um, and it's kind of got some um, stinging lyrics on here. I guess it could be directed to the band, but vocally you know he was the man he was the man back in the days nowadays you know he still got the chops not quite as you know he can't reach out there like he used to in the 80s but um but that style of uh, of singing like i say has always been hey you got anybody that sounds like queen drake anybody that can sound like you know jeff tate that was always what we were looking for was that queen drake sound when we compared to other bands like that so queen drake uh jeff tate favorite singer of the metal genre um, the second one I'm going to throw out there, another one of those names that's always out there when it comes to metal is a high water mark. I don't have any vinyl to show. I'm going to show a video clip here. And, um, anyway, and that's Ronnie James Dio, the late Ronnie James Dio, the late great Ronnie James Dio. Another one of those guys. Hey, any bands that sound like Dio, he's got the powerhouse vocals. You know, he's been around since the seventies. You got the early elf stuff, which is kind of rock and, 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 and boogie type weird, you know, styles in there. And then he, then he gets into, you know, rainbow and, you know, now he's getting some hard rock there and he, you know, he's crossing over doing, does the solo stuff is in black Sabbath for a couple albums. Some of the pivotal black Sabbath albums though, you got to get the Dio years. He goes solo and just album after album, you know, of amazing, consistent, amazing high production material. Uh, he later, you know, hooks back up with the Black Sabbath guys. 
Um, and, you know, they released a couple albums. Um, and it's just all the way up to his death. He's doing, you know, they did the Heaven and Hell album stuff. But anyway, his death, you know, he's still going strong uh, up to his death as far as uh, playing and singing and, and just consistently sounding great. I did get to see him live um, during the Sac Sacred Heart tour. It was a new, like second or third album tour. Um, great show. Have followed his career all through the years. So he would be my second on my wall. Third is going to be Michael Sweet of Striper. Had to have Striper here, right? Um, Michael Sweet, I think, has one of the most in interesting voices. He's got the really, you know, really high, can get the hit really high notes. He's He's got a consistent, very good melodic metal uh, vocal style. Um, he was good enough to where he sang with Boston for a while um, because he had that that this you know he could he could hit the, the notes that uh, the early Boston music had um, and it to me he's gotten better and stronger as he's gotten older he's now my age and the striper albums that they're releasing now are probably in some you know better um, I have people kind of diss him because of the early days you know he had the really sweet and squeaky clean and you know they were really overproduced and now you know the vocals are beefier but he's still got he can't probably hit that super high squealing notes like he did on soldiers in the command stuff but he still has a very powerful uh voice and even my wife who you know i mean she's she likes this kind of music a little but she's like you know i don't know why michael sweet doesn't get more attention he's probably got to be one of the best singers around he's just so powerful so anyway, he would be my third choice. Um, love Michael Sweet. Have talked to him and interviewed him a couple times. He seems like a great guy. Um, read his book, um, his biography and everything. And just, you know, I've always been impressed with the material he releases, both in Solo and in Striper and in Sweet and Lynch, just everything he does. So he would be my number three choice. Number four choice is one that I mentioned in an album I have recently, and that's this is the other album I have by him, Impella Terry, Rob Rock. Not many people would, would probably be as known. He would not be as known to as many people. Now, Rob Rock gets around. He's one of those guys that has been hired for a lot of projects and has appeared on a lot of you know guest appearances here and there. Um, like if you go back to the early albums by Avantasia, um, when he had a bunch of different singers, you know he appeared on there. He's got a lot of songs that appear on compilations, not compilations, but bands will do albums with a lot of singers and he'll be called in. Um, Impelitary, he's been with Impelitary since the early days, uh, in, back in the 80s. You know, they did the first Impelitary album, and then Rob Rock disappeared. He did the Mars Project, uh, Project Driver. He uh, Then he went out and did a album by Angelica, which was a Christian band. Um, he did that, which kind of started making the Christian market say, well, why is he doing that? Is this guy a Christian, you know? And then you come to find out that he does... Uh, associate with that and so he's done other christian releases um in Pel and his lyrics are very you know nowadays have become you know very you could tell in his lyrics um without being too preachy um and he's done in Pelletary then quite a few times even though in Pelletary comes in and goes with different singers he's been on probably the majority of albums by them and he's done a lot of couple solo albums great stuff he's just got one of those really melodic yet powerful um just melodic metal voices that the kind of style that I really, uh, really enjoy the most, and there's a lot of singers in metal that have that, you know, the soaring high vocals and just very melodic. So I mean, you could go and and choose a lot, but he has been one that uh, I have, you know, followed since the '80s. I buy pretty much anything that has his name on it. Anything that he touches is gold, and he is just a powerhouse singer, uh, kind of like a melodic. Dio just he's got that kind of really powerful sometimes slightly gritty but for the most part he's just got that very powerful melodic voice so there you go the four I would have on my wall from the metal world would be Jeff Tate Ronnie James Dio Michael Sweet and Rob Rock anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoy if you haven't heard of any of these bands check them out anyway thanks a lot for watching and rock on